太烫了。That was a very late dive. He managed to make it work. He gets the green. We're underway. Three races left. Makes it work, and the defending champion wins at circuit leading on. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Ever witness someone so fast on track you doubt you could ever be on their level? The mission of Advanced Motorsports is to demonstrate the speed is achievable for everyone. With the expertise of some of the best sim drivers in North America, we are set to release free content on social media and comprehensive guides on our website. For those seeking the ultimate experience, our Advanced Motorsport Institute and personalized coaching sessions are the way to go. No matter your level of experience, we invite you to follow us on our social media to learn to be fast, fast. It's Talladega weekend in the Precision Racing League Cup Series. Round four of season two, 2024 of the Cup Series. Coming at you live from Lincoln, Alabama. It's the virtual Talladega Super Speedway. And I'm joined alongside Robert Hill Joy, uh, Jr. Goodness me, I was about to say uh, Joyal. I'm Dylan Coyle along with Robert Hill. Oh, man, it's uh, it's been a weekend of fun in the real world at Talladega. And Robert, it's going to be 95 laps of chaos here. Oh, absolutely, Mr. Coyle. It's going to be a great night here tonight. Talladega, always one of those equalizers, a track that gives guys the opportunity that aren't normally up at the front the chance to get up there and duke it out with the absolute best here in the Precision Racing League. And I mean, looking at practice, the usual suspects are at the front, but once we hit the green flag, none of that matters here tonight. 
Yeah, none of it matters at all. Let's take a look at the schedule in the Precision Racing League Cup Series, and it follows the Real World Cup Series schedule. Of course, North Wilkesboro, round eight of nine, will be for points, at least in the Cup Series. It's a little bit of a difference from the Real World NASCAR schedule, but Talladega, it's going to mark the, well, not quite, what do you say, 44%, something like that, 44.444, repeating all that of this. The pre-halfway point. Yeah, the pre-halfway point, and when we get to Dover next Sunday night, it's going to be past the halfway point here. Uh, It's pretty much an April and May schedule with Circuit of the Americas uh, happening, proceeding before that one-week Easter break. It's very weird that we started at a road course, especially with that week break, but nonetheless, we're at a good stretch of races, and this one serves to be the most interesting challenge yet. Trent Dinkle has been perfect in this season so far. Three for three in wins. He is dominating the point standings right now. That's no shocker. Abner Acosta has had an up and down start to the year, but still is in second in the standings. Eric Hag, Pat Harvey, and Nick Gowin is in fifth place. Everyone else a little bit more spread out from the top five as it stands. However, Dinkle is dominant. This is the best chance for anybody else to steal a win from him. That's exactly it. Trent Dinkle has been the guy to beat all season long. Like you said, we've seen the likes of Acosta, Hag, Harvey go in up there as well. But now we're going to welcome those guys that are a little bit further back. Your, your Chris Hudson's, your Stan Carnathan's, guys like that, the opportunity to get up there, compete with uh, Dinkle, Acosta, and Hag, and see if they can grab that victory as we are heading into qualifying. Qualifying really doesn't mean a ton here, Dylan. Obviously, uh, you want to either be right at the front or right at the back here at Talladega. If you're hanging in the middle, that's usually Action Alley. That's usually where stuff happens. So for me personally, I want to be way at the back, hanging out there, letting everyone else wreck, and then I'll pounce with about 10, 15 to go. Yeah, 100%. And if it was open qualifying here, you usually see teammates working together. Quick look at the team standings here is a 62-point lead for Private Label Team Hype. Over Pioneer Racing is currently where it stands first and second. But in qualifying at Dega, you'll see a lot of teams sometimes decide not to qualify. Some teams do qualify. And really, it all evens out at the end of the day. But... It's time to thank some of the partners that make it work for us at RaceBot TV and the Precision Racing League. And Advanced Sim Racing is one of those. Owned and operated by passionate sim racers, Advanced Sim Racing designs and builds the sturdiest and most durable aluminum profile racing simulation cockpits available in the market today. All PRL members also get a 5% discount on ASR products using the Precision 5 coupon code. RaceBox Sim Racing. Racebox offers mid and high end button boxes for sim racing enthusiasts, from the casual gamer up to the most meticulous sim racing driver. Competitively priced and carefully handcrafted, our button boxes are an enjoyable addition to any sim racing setup. Visit RaceboxSimRacing.com and get a 5% discount using the Precision 5 coupon code. The Butt Kicker. Buck Kicker products add incredible immersion and realism to every game. Feel every nuance and truly put yourself in the driver's seat. Maradness. Maradness is a performance lifestyle brand motivated by motorsport and founded by professional race car driver Daniel Morad. For more information, visit maradness.com. Mr. Hedge, iRacing Photography. Capture your finest, proudest, or simply worst moments from your hobby in up to 8K resolution. A great addition to any sim room. And finally, Advanced Motorsports. Get ready to learn to be fast. Fast with Advanced Motorsports. Follow them on their socials to become a better driver. Just a little bit of time remaining in Talladega qualifying. Two minutes and change. Ryan Scully currently on top of the leaderboard, but only around half of the field has set a lap in qualifying so far. Still time to maybe get two more if drivers have already started or about to complete their out laps here. Skolny up 11 thousands on Carnathan. Uh, I mean, you're gonna see a lot of the drivers, we don't usually talk about in the top 10, run in the top 10 in this race, 
which is always exciting. It, it absolutely is exciting. It's an opportunity for guys to get up there, like I said, and, and really put on a show, showcase their sponsors if they don't normally get the opportunity to be up inside the top 10. And, you know, you mentioned some guys likely won't put down a qualifying effort here today. We've had 17 put a lap in so far, and I'm only counting two additional drivers on the racetrack with Mark Kalen and Abner Acosta. As Acosta puts down a lap now, going to slot in 12th on lap number one. Mark Kalen, the only other driver currently out there trying to put in a run. So it looks like the likes of David Stevenson, Maverick Davis, Jake Mackey, Chad Kibbe, Greg Bray, Dan Willis, and Jeff Chandler will not put a lap in and start towards the rear of the field, which could be a good strategy or could be something that they regret a little bit later on. Yeah, 100%. And uh, no matter what, it's it's really going to come down to the luck of the draw here, right? Talladega, it always happens Absolutely. that way. Uh, and, you know, I, I feel like when we're talking about pitch strategy, this is a 95-lap race. If it goes green, if it goes green for the majority of the race, this is a two-stop race on fuel. Yeah, that's correct. I actually ran a 188-lap race earlier this afternoon, and we were doing about 37 to 40 laps on a tank. So, yeah, you're looking at about two stops. If you get some cautions that fall a little bit earlier on, you'll likely be able to split the longer portion of the day and just come down one additional time, but two stops nonetheless. And we'll see how the strategy plays out as the checkered flag is displayed, and that's going to do it for qualifying. Yeah, that's going to do it for qualifying here. And uh, let's look at the starting grid at Talladega. It loads in just a few moments. Uh, Ryan Scalney, we just talked about him. He had the provisional pole. He's starting on the pole. The number 91 Podium Hunters eSport will be in on the inside row with Stan Carnathan in second. Tim Perry, Luke Christian, Chris Hudson, and Trent Dinkle the always formidable foe of this series, starting out your first three rows. In seventh is Park Hilliard with Nick Gowen in eighth, Tommy Brandon and Waldo Walden round out the top 10, and John Jones and Eric Hogg, third in the standings, starts in 12th. Mark Kalen, Abner Acosta in row seven, while Adam Brockway and Pat Harvey will be in row eight. Greg Carr, Jose Medina, 17th and 18th in the field with Marshall Harris, Starting in 19th, the last driver to set a qualifying lap down. Maverick Davis rounds out the top 20 with Jeff Chandler, Chad Kibbe, Dan Willis, Jake Mackey, David Stevenson, and Craig Bray. Your 26 car starting field. And just a reminder, uh, there were a few drivers not allowed to qualify at Talladega. Uh, of those uh, multiples that did not, Stevenson, Bray, Davis, and Willis. Uh, both of them either coming back from uh, suspensions or getting penalty points from the previous race. Chad Kibbe, also, we talked about him last week. He did qualify um, at Texas, but he was not supposed to um, from an, a, for, uh, a previous outstanding penalty in season one, um, round eight. So he not only got a five point reduction, but also this was not allowed to qualify for Talladega here. And for next weekend's race at Dover, Duncan Staroska is suspended for this race and will have a DNQ, at least in qualifying. He'll still be able to start the race when he returns at Dover Motor Speedway. Dega, the pace lap has started. 33 degrees of banking. You know, it's interesting. I stood atop of the banking uh, this, this weekend on the track walk. I thought I was going to fall over. It was very sketchy, but when I looked it up, the banking has around 0.6 degrees of difference in turns one and two versus turns three and four. Not that it matters, but if you like numbers like me, Robert, that matters. Yeah, there's quite a bit of banking here. Very steep, like you said. And uh, I think if you went around here rather slowly in a pace car, you might start to slide down the racetrack a little bit. So that's why we have really high speeds here at Talladega. And uh, it, it's certainly an amazing facility. I've been here myself. This was at the first NASCAR race uh, that I ever attended it was a couple of years ago at Talladega. And it is quite the experience, Dylan. That's a heck of a, heck of a race to have as your first race right there, Robert. Yeah, uh, first Talladega, second Daytona 500. So. Pretty, uh, pretty good ones. 
Super Speedway Racing is in your repertoire, and uh, we'll get it out of the way early. The start-finish line located a lot further back than uh, you usually see in that little short shoot between the tri-oval and turn one, meaning this pace lap will be a bit longer than you'd usually see if it was, for example, Daytona. Um, personally, Talladega to me is one of those racetracks that you either feel like a hero if you come out of nowhere to win it, or you feel like a zero because you knew you had a shot to win and things just did not roll your way. The iRacing pace car starts its trek down into pit road. The field now in the hands of Ryan Scully. 95 laps or 90 minutes here at Talladega Super Speedway and the slow crawl into this starting zone. Green flag in the air, Barney waves it. We're underway at Dega and a big jump from Scully with Carnathan right in behind on the outside. Yeah, great jump there by Ryan Scully behind him. On the inside is Tim Perry. One of those names I don't think we mentioned as of yet this season. He is side by side with Stan Carnathan. Carnathan getting a great push up top by Luke Christian. One of those drivers that's really come on the scene lately and put a name for himself as he gets the right third corner of Carnathan. Going to push him clear of the Ryan Scully machine. We'll see if either one of them opts to drop down to the inside. That's something you're going to see coming to play here at Talladega here tonight. You're going to want to try to control both lanes as best as you possibly can. As of right now, Carnathan seems comfortable hanging up top of his partner, Luke Christian. Third line already forming with, guess who, Maverick Davis uh, trying to make it work. I think Pat Harvey is actually the 67 machine leading this third line. Right in behind is Chad Kibbe. So these drivers trying to waste no time into getting up into that lead battle. There should be no fuel saving in this race. And way out in front is Carnathan and Luke Christian. That is too far. That's exactly it. Too far indeed. As you see, Scalney, or uh, sorry, Carnathan again shuffled out of the way. Luke Christian going to inherit the lead with a push there by Trent Dinkle. Pat Harvey just beside him. Here comes Scalney back on the inside with help from Tim Perry. And just of note, we talked about these drivers working their way up, making that third lane. Pat Harvey already up 10 spots. Chad Kimmy started at the tail of the field. He's up 15 spots himself. So very easy to gain spots here at Talladega. Also very easy to lose them. That's something you're going to see coming to play throughout this one as well. As the top lane currently is led by Waldo Walden. Doesn't have much help behind him. A little bit further back as we're going to get sideways just a bit there. Maverick Davis looks like he's going to be the one to lose out. Yeah, Maverick Davis falling back considerably there outside the top 10 right now. But now Trent Dinkle pushing Lou Christian way out in front on the outside line. They're not really tied up together here as we round three and four on lap three of this 95 lap race at Talladega. Abner Acosta looking a bit high, fanning out, trying to find a place to go. I think all they're doing right now is putting themselves in the best position possible to ride out a lot of this race. There are no halfway points. There's no stages. There are bonus points for leading a lap, leading the most laps, and getting the fastest lap here as Luke Christian just set, getting pushed by Trent Dinkle. But you also have to do a lot of driving through the rear view mirror because if you see drivers start to fall back, they're about to build a big run onto you. Yeah, that's exactly it. As we see Abner Acosta taking a look to the inside of Maverick Davis there, he's going to get back in line. Davis and Acosta both. These drivers have found trouble on numerous occasions this season, but have been able to battle back to solid finishes tonight. They're going to want to keep themselves clean while also staying in a good position up towards the front of the field. See if they have an opportunity to maybe steal a victory away from Trent Dinkle as he currently remains there in the second position behind Christian. Ahead of Harvey, here comes the top lane forming up a little bit now with Nicholas Gowen. Gowen has some help from Park Hilliard and that 82 of Stan Carnathan. Carnathan, of course, we saw up front a little bit earlier on. Now he's finding himself back around the 13th, 14th position on the race track. Actually gets a little piece of the outside wall as he's up on the high side, three wide in the middle. There is Abner Acosta. And on the bottom side, Ryan Scalney. So a lot of those drivers we saw at the front earlier on now find themselves back in the hornet's nest of the midfield. 
It's very intriguing to see how these drivers try and shuffle the deck and play the cards the way they want to get it played. Abner Acosta currently in the middle of three wide, thinking about making a four wide here. That's exactly what he's going to do. That's a bold move so early in this race. Wow. That is a questionable move at best right there. I would do it later on. I wouldn't do it on lap number six. There's still so much time left to go in this race. You don't want to risk absolutely destroying your car at such an early stage in the event. But after Acosta, one of those guys not afraid to be aggressive to work his way to the front. Sometimes aggression wins. Sometimes aggression leads to the tow truck. But as for right now, it's going to be A-OK -okay for Abner Acosta currently holding on to position number 11 as they remain three wide. Just a little bit further back there, Tommy Brandon and Abner Acosta going to be two wide. They're going to clear the inside lane of Mark Kalen. Kalen going to fall back just a little bit here. Has help from Tim Perry, another driver that we saw up front a little bit earlier on, but single file all through the top eight there as Nicholas Goen tries to close the gap up onto Ryan Scalney, but behind him, it remains side by side. Acosta on the inside, Brandon up top. Brandon has help from Park Hilliard and Stan Carnath in the inside lane is of course Abner Acosta, Waldo Walden and Jose Medina as they try to work their way up there. The pack has all gotten back together in the top 15. Now. They're way too spread apart if Abner wants to make moves to get this inside line going forward. Christian and Dinkle, you can see Dinkle right onto the rear bumper of Luke Christian. Oh, don't push him through the trioval, especially when you're not hooked up. That could have been quite dangerous, but Christian is starting to back that outside line up just a bit. Abner Acosta is starting to crawl forward to the inside of Chad Kibbe for P4. Jose Medina sets the fastest lap, provisionally holding that mark, and the 43 almost went up high. Maverick Davis had to check up in the middle. Nowhere to go for Chris Hudson, but now he gets some speed. It's crazy how big these runs can be. The runs are absolutely insane in these next-gen cars. You just saw it right there with Chris Hudson. We saw it a little bit earlier on with Abner Acosta as that inside lane really uh, propelled itself forward as if it was on rocket fuel. But as of right now, it does look like we're getting back to what we were just a couple laps ago, side by side between Tommy Brandon and Abner Acosta. Nick Goen is currently the bubble car right here. As you see Acosta closing up on the inside of him, here comes the inside lane once again. It's Abner Acosta, Waldo Walden trying to work their way forward. We'll see if they're going to be able to get a run up there. They're going to get up to Pat Harvey, but will they be able to continue the momentum forward up to the Trent Dinkle machine? I don't believe so right now, but the inside lane starting to form up just a little bit more here as the likes of Chris Hudson and the 91 of Ryan Scalney starting to fall back there in the middle. The top lane dying off just a bit as well. So we might have a bit of a shuffle going on up here towards the front, but we'll see how everyone settles in, how these lines start to dissipate a little oh! bit and maybe get into a pack, because that was very close right there. Yeah, Chad Kibbe was almost completely sandwiched. Uh, that could have been dangerous. Nick Golan on the outside, that inside line got dangerously close to putting him in a spot he did not want to be in. I think that was Maverick Davis on the inside that kind of drifted up through the tri-oval. You know, the tri-oval is very banked. I don't think a lot of people realize how dangerous it can be, especially with how quick the transition is from relatively flat in those short shoots out of turn four and going into turn one to the banking that is in the tri-oval. Yeah, that's exactly it. The tri-oval is one of the trickiest parts of this racetrack. You get down a little bit too low here uh, up against that yellow line and it's really bumpy. That's something that'll really unsettle the cars. You get up a little bit too high, you're gonna get sucked into the outside wall. So there's a lot of different complicated aspects of the trial well here at Talladega. It's a lot more than some people do realize, but uh, as they continue to charge forward, Abner Acosta really showing his strength right now. He's gonna be side by side with Pat Harvey for position number three, but we've seen this numerous times. He gets up to Harvey, not able to advance any further. What he really does need is Pat Harvey to drop down in front of him here, push Pat Harvey up alongside Trent Dinkle and Lou Christian, 
and then we could potentially get those two lanes going side by side for the race lead. But as of right now, Luke Christian does continue to lead, but here comes Abner Acosta on the inside with a little bit of side draft. I mean, that's why we saw Acosta making those aggressive moves earlier in the race. He knows the point situation, and he needs to try and get every single one that he can get to mount a comeback, currently down 35 points to Trent Dinkle. He takes the lead away from Lou Christian. Waldo Walden has that inside line working, and now Abner starts to just move a little bit around. He shuffles up top. He wants this lead. He wants to keep it. I mean, you lead the most laps, you lead one lap, that's a couple extra points in your book. And we've seen how close these championship fights have come between he and Trent. And that's a very late block from Abner there. Yeah, Abner Acosta definitely showing the aggression here, trying to do whatever he possibly can to get out front. And actually for Lou Christian, getting behind Abner Acosta, even just for a brief moment, was a little bit of a blessing in disguise because when you're leading these lanes, staying up front for the whole time, you are absolutely using up so much fuel in these cars. You're going to be shorter in the pit strategy than everyone else behind you. And that could really impact if you don't have the appropriate help to come down pit road for a potential green flag stop to get back out there and still have a partner to work with. As after Acosta gets shuffled a little bit to the inside there, off of contact from Waldo Walden, the outside lane, jetting back up towards the front. Luke Christian, Trent Dinkle, Mark, Kalen and Pat Harvey up there in the top four with Chris Hudson just behind them. Mark Kalen having himself a very solid but quiet start to the day so far. And at Talladega, quiet is good. Is it though? I mean, it's, I it it's good if you're up front. It's not good if you're just sitting in the back. You want to start to make moves. Are you happy with being in the back as we see a lot of four wide? If you're Mark Kalen, are you happy to just fall in line in the back here? It's really hard to say because there's a certain point at these super speedways where you can really feel it. You can feel the pin starting to slowly get pulled and eventually it's just going to pop. But as of right now, I, I don't know if Mark Halen's happy with his current position. He's kind of stuck in the middle of this pack towards the rear. And if he were, if something were to happen, it would be very easy for him to get sucked right into it. Three wide racing almost throughout the entirety of the top 20. This is Talladega at its finest. You can get three wide racing easily here as we've been seeing this race. You can go four wide, but usually that's only reserved for the last final laps of a race or a stage if we did have stage racing. Nonetheless, this race has had some questionable moves as uh, we're kind of noting in our behind the scenes chat. It's uh, it's definitely been a aggressive super speedway race and 15 laps of green flag action so far. I don't know if that set to continue. Eventually we're either gonna hit a point where the guys calm down a little bit, get in line, uh, start single filing out just a bit or they all run into each other, have mass chaos out there, and we lose half the field. It's it's going to be one or the other, not the middle, but uh, we'll see which one prevails here. As right now, the top four has absolutely pulled away, but if this second grouping is able to get together and start uh, actually working together, they'll be able to just easily pass that top four, which is currently led by Waldo Walden, Chad Kibbe, Adam Rockway, and Ryan Scalby. So uh, a shuffle up front from some drivers we don't normally get to talk about leading the race, but they're about to get swallowed up right here. It's the nature of the beast. This draft heavy racetrack, it can lead to some huge changes in pace for multiple cars, multiple lines, especially when they start to stack up and get a little bit squirrely, as we saw right there between Waldo Walden and uh, Chad Kibbe. That could have been disastrous. However, they kept it stable. The outside line, though, definitely gained some momentum because of it, but they just, none of them seem comfortable in where they're running. No, nobody really does seem comfortable whatsoever. As of right now, there's just so much shuffling going on on the racetrack. We're about halfway, or just just approaching halfway in the opening fuel run of the day. We'll see if we can make it to that green flag stop portion. But uh, one thing I'm watching here is almost every time Mark Kalen gets into a pack, 
He's forced three wide and shuffled right out of it. So frustration definitely got to be setting in with him. You can see it on his face there. He's just... He doesn't know what to think at this point, but Mark Halen falling towards the rear. Maverick Davis getting a little piece of the outside wall just ahead of them there. We saw a big puff of smoke off of him as he's pushing after Acosta up top. No real help for them, but we'll see what they're able to do off of the side draft. Looks like it might be able to work out. Mark is just trying to do anything he can to get himself involved, and uh, he's keeping it interesting, even though he's going back and forth from the front to the back. Uh, he's, uh, he's definitely laughing now, and I think it's more like, when is this madness going to stop? Been very solid racing, even with the moves that we're just uh, a little bit concerned for, and Mark Kalen saying, and I quote, this is intense. It's been fun to watch. How long will it last? That's exactly it. How long will it last is, is the best way to look at it. I'm just looking right now and seeing the gap separating the entire field right now is just one second from first to last. So everyone together here, one slight mistake, Dylan, and it could be game over for a lot of drivers here. And... Uh, as it was just pointed out to us and is quite clear, nobody is even thinking about fuel saving right now. It is absolutely foot to the floor, balls to the wall racing right now here at Talladega. Well, it's uh, it's Dega, baby, and my goodness, we've got some more in-car cameras or in, uh, I don't like in saying in-car, in-room cameras. Jake Mackey, he's got a lot of racing memorabilia set up against the oh, wall. Who's your tire? Uh, 24 hours of Le Mans, the Vanguardia du Mans, tu peux un peu français. Wow. Oui. I'm impressed, Dylan. I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, J'ai pas un peu. Un peu français. Un peu. Just a little bit. <laughs> Love uh, it. Oh, you know. Love it. Three years of French in high school, and that's all I remember. <laughs> Nick Gowen currently in the lead of this race, who made sure we knew it's not pronounced Gowen, it's pronounced Gowen. Um, but I feel like we, we can't say go in until he wins this potential in this season. That's right. So for now, he's Nick Gowan, driver of the number 88 machine, as he's currently leading the inside lane with help from Stan Carnathan. As you see, the in-house in shot of Trent Dinkle, the perennial winner here in the uh, PRL Cup Series, currently running in that fourth position. But, oh, we have a major shuffle going on here through turns one and two. Stan Carnathan just absolutely falling back. I got to wonder if potentially he's having some mechanical issues. Did he blow his motor? Oh, no. I think or, he is he, or is he just bailing? He's not slowing. No, he's, he's just bailing. He does not feel comfortable with it. You see the revs are right back up. He's right back in the draft. And he gets going right away. But he does get back to, he wants to be in this lead pack, right? But now he's, I don't know what that was. I'm trying to find some reasoning right here, oh, but. yeah, Stan Carnathan just said that he broke. He, he's heading to pit road. So the in-car shot we just saw right there, Dylan, was not actually Stan. He's taking it to pit road. He absolutely just, his car just died on him. Wow. He, he said the engine didn't blow up. The car just broke. So that's, that's really weird. We've seen the glitch happened before. It's just really unfortunate when something like that does happen. But out front, Luke Christian, Pat Harvey, Chris Hudson, Park Hilliard, and Marshall Harris, the top five, as we currently have Hilliard and Harris side by side. Harris may get some help here momentarily from Abner Acosta and Maverick Davis as they're coming up on the inside lane here. Trent Dinkle with them as well. Dinkle says no thanks and opts to go to the high side, leaving them behind as the inside lane just gonna fall towards the rear of this pack. I do believe without too much help. Well, it did lead to a big change in who is in the lead pack and who is not the top 11 uh, right now. Trailed by Trent Dinkle, you don't say that quite often, um, is all in this lead pack battle. But the secondary group is just around two seconds off the lead. If they can get organized and stay clean, they can get right back into this. However, it's easier said than done because of that accordion effect. It's kind of like dominoes, right? You want to get moving quickly, so you 
kind of need to work together. It's that old Kyle Busch saying, except without the profanity, that if you work together, you get a chance to uh, go win the race. If you don't work together, you don't have a chance to win the race. So pro uh, profanity less, you know? And the thing with that second pack right now, they're less than three seconds behind the main group. If they're able to actually single file out right now, they're going to get great momentum built up and be able to work their way back up to that lead pack. I, like I said, I was in a race earlier today where we were actually nine seconds behind the lead pack, got single file, and were able to make that all back up here. So they are definitely not out of it. Of course, still really early and cautions will likely come into play at some point, but uh, we'll see what they're able to do to work their way back up towards that lead pack. And speaking of the lead pack, they have single filed out for the most part with Abner Acosta being the only car on the inside. Now he's joined by Maverick Davis and both of them are gonna get back up to the high lane. So single file through the top 11 and they're just gonna start pulling away bit by bit on that wall to wall and let group number two. There is no organization from that second group. They're now over three seconds back. And I'll say this too, smart from the lead pack to continue pushing through with this top 11 running single file. You run side by side, you really slow down the entire group. There's a lot of side drafting that happens. Often uh, you'll see when drivers are trying to get big runs, uh, the other drivers uh, who maybe make a run to the inside then get right to that left rear quarter panel of the car on the outside to pack air on it and slow them down. So side drafting um, is only a, a positive if you're the one doing it to try and get in front. And that's exactly right. The side draft is something that can either really help you out or lead to potential disaster. And if you're side drafting in that secondary pack, it's not going to help whatsoever. You need to get single file. You need to start pushing each other. Work your way back up there because leaning on each other uh, while you're trailing by quite a margin is just going to work as a parachute. And as of right now, that gap about 2.7 seconds between Maverick Davis and Craig Gray, who leads group number two. They're finally starting to single file out a little bit. About 10 of them now are single file. Still a couple of guys working double file behind them, but they're quickly gonna turn themselves into a third pack that is gonna have to work together to get back up to the second pack, who's currently trying to catch up to pack number one. As, as I say that, pack number two splits off again and is gonna go double file. They were starting to catch up. Absolutely. And I just, I never understand why drivers don't work together more on super speedway races. I know it's the racer mentality uh, to try and advance your position as much as possible, but sometimes you're, you're either gonna fight for 12 or you're gonna fight for the win of this race, and fighting for 12 means going now, fighting for the win means going later, so. Sometimes drivers just need to be a little bit more patient. I mean, look how disorganized the single file line is. Now they have to go double file uh, because of that disorganization. Abner Acosta let Trent Dinkle back in there. Two teammates working at it right now. James O'Brien, by the way, not in this race. He missed last week, misses this week because I believe he is still in Japan. I believe you're correct on that. Yeah, I do think they're back next week uh, from that Japan trip, which sounds really cool. I mean, I would definitely love to visit Japan myself, so I'm a little jealous of that, but looking at that second group now does look like they've finally gotten into a uniformed line on the inside, trying to build up the momentum, and they've gotten it down to about two and a half seconds between themselves and that lead pack, so we'll see what they're able to do, see if they're able to get themselves up there and competing once again, but uh, another Going. thing to keep in mind is we're within about 10 laps of potential pit stops. I would say, especially with the lack of fuel saving in this race, we might be a little bit, uh, what do you think? You think 38, 39, or are we thinking lap 40 or so? I mean, no I'm matter what. 37 to 30, 37 or 38 will kick it off for sure. They're going to need to go in groups. So the first uh, time that one person says, hey, we're, I'm coming down pit road, a lot of people are going to join them. And uh, 
I mean, it's going to have to go by packs, right? As this second group starts to catch up. They're starting to fly right now. They're starting to work together. So that's a big bonus for them. Uh, and they're almost within drafting range of this lead group, so it's only going to help them pick up some more steam. I mean, man, they really turned it on in the last couple laps. Good for them. Yeah, looking at it now, they're, they can visibly see that gap getting smaller and smaller between group one and group two. And I would expect once that second group catches up to the tail end of group number one, which is Maverick Davis, you see it on your screen right now, that is not a large gap right now but once that second group gets up there expect them to try to make some sort of a move to carry the momentum that they've already built up to get around this group and potentially turn themselves into the lead pack but one thing you mentioned dylan was when pit stops happen coming down in groups the worst thing that can happen for you is a team ahead of you goes down splits up your pack and you're stuck by yourself so you're going to have to have a lot of communication amongst your packs here if you want to come down together and stay together when you finish up that pit stop. It's easier said than done. The second pack has finally caught up to the first pack, and there's going to be a massive run. Abner Acosta down to the bottom with Trent Dinkle. They're going to ride the wave of this secondary pack. Big shove to the back of that Camaro ZL1, number nine machine of Trent Dinkle, and they're going to the front. Yeah, Dinkle currently leading the inside lane there, the number nine machine for a private label team hype. As you see Maverick Davis going to the top, they're going to be uh, just about three wide now as Davis looking to the outside of Tommy Brandon. Not quite able to get there. That's great car in the middle. Here comes uh, Trent Dinkle on the inside with Abner Acosta. They're going to get blocked as Chris Hudson, Pat Harvey, and Lou Christian come down. Maverick Davis going to fall back on the outside as we are going to be catching up to a little bit of lap traffic here momentarily. So that could come into play as well. But luckily, they are seeming to get back to single or double file for the most part within this group until you get back to Maverick Davis, who continues to be three wide up top. Yeah, and as a quick update to Stan Carnathan losing power, uh, he is that lapped traffic. He's the only one that is not on the lead lap uh, in this race right now. He's two laps behind. Uh, he'll go three laps down once he is passed here by Luke Christian and this lead group. They're running too wide throughout most of the field, so it should be quite easy for them to all get around Carnathan. Uh, weird issue. We still don't know exactly what happened to uh, Stan in that 82 machine, but uh, things look good now. If you get some well-timed cautions, you can maybe get back to the lead lap. I, I don't know if that's possible, but we have seen crazier things happen. We absolutely have. If, if by chance we get into a slew of caution opportunities, that'll really play into the cards of Stan Carnathan, currently back at the tail of this pack now. You see him up on the high side there, multiple laps down due to his whatever issue it was. I can't even say an engine issue because really we, we just don't know what in the world happened. But uh, one thing I'm watching back here, Maverick Davis kind of stuck in 13th. He's taking the opportunity to look high. He's looked to the middle, uh, peaked low a couple of times here. Just nowhere for him really to go with any sort of momentum. Nobody really wants to work their way up towards the front now, which as we established not long ago, we're within five or so laps of that pit cycle kicking off. So expect more drivers to work their way down to the inside and single file out ahead of the first round of pit stops here today. However, I will say, this lead group has uh, put themselves very far out in front here. That's, uh, that's, that's surprising how far in front they've gotten. You have to imagine that with all of them running three wide in the back, it's not gonna necessarily last for that long, but the top six have uh, broken away to maybe 15 car lengths from the rest of the field. Yeah, that top six, like you said, with Tommy Brandon as the tail end of that one has pulled about eight tenths of a second ahead of Nicholas Goen and Abner Acosta as they work their way down the back straightaway now. Nick going to drop down in front of Abner, get that bottom line moving just a little bit of it. Adam Brockway goes up to the high side with help from Jose Medina 
as we just got word Lou Christian is going to come down and kick off the pit stops here. Multiple cars coming down. We'll watch for chaos. Oh, there's chaos. There's some contact. Nick Goen was just hit in the rear. He goes through the grass. Oh, that's unfortunate for him. Who called it and who did it? He's going to have to get either back on track or accept some kind of black flag. Looks like he's just going to try and ride it out and lose all the positions, all that hard work he potentially had. Couldn't quite see who went into him, but all these cars coming into pit road, I believe it's 12. Yeah, about a dozen cars, if not more, have just come down pit road to kick off. Oh, we got one round on the back straightaway. That might bring out a caution. He's it is a one car on incident. Duck. And it's like you said, way on the inside. Didn't see exactly who that was that got turned. But I'm oh no. Tim Perry, Dylan. He's very slow on the apron right now, trying to work his way back up to speed. But Maverick Davis, Eric Hyde coming down to continue the pit cycle here. Very chaotic first pit cycle of the day here at Talladega. No question chaos has ensued the top seven are still out on the racetrack looking to get more laps they might run the tank dry and see what can happen if they do that you might lose a lap here you should lose a lap here if you go through a full pit stop cycle it, it all depends on how all the cards play out and who's still out on track obviously with that big old mess we just saw, multiple drivers are going to be on the losing end of things right now. We'll see if Rockway, Medina, Bray, Willis, Harris, Jones, and Stevenson go into the pits here. They continue rolling. I think you can definitely expect this group to come down together when they do opt to come down. Of course, three Maradness cars inside the top four with Jose Medina mixed into it here. We'll see what happens, but one thing I want to just make quick note of is I watched Nick Gowan come down for his second, or Nick Gowen, sorry, Nick, come down for his second set of uh, attempts at pitting, and he went for a big slide again, so I wonder if maybe he's running a bit of a different brake package on the car this week that's not giving him much opportunity to really slow that car down, or his marks are just a little bit too far so we'll see how it goes for further uh, iterations of this pit cycle. But Adam Brockway, Jose Medina, Craig Bray, and Dan Willis remain on the racetrack. No indications as to when they will come down pit road, but uh, just saw Stan Carnathan go down once again. So his life is not going his way. Carnathan and Chad Kibbe speeding in pit road. They have to come down and serve a penalty each of them and for Carnathan obviously that's another unfortunate moment for Chad Kibbe who did not qualify uh, in this race due to prior penalties is gonna have to come down pit road and certainly go one lap down on lap 39 of 95 not yet at the halfway point but it seems like most of these drivers are gonna try and split this race up into thirds except for at least right now the top seven. Here's a look at what happened going into pit road. Nick Gowen on the inside right here, currently scored in 24th. He slows down, but he's just underneath the yellow line. Oh. And was that Stevenson in behind? I believe it was. Who just did not slow down whatsoever. So close to hitting Chris Hudson right there. And you see Ryan Skolny on the outside going through the grass as well. That could have been horrible for multiple drivers. Instead, it's really just a bad deal for Gowen and Scalney and, uh, well, Stevenson as well. Yeah, just unfortunate there for Nick Gowen. Had to come down the second time. Uh, still is scored on the lead lap, luckily for him, as Brockway, Medina, Willis, and uh, the rest of their party, including Craig Gray, did come down pit road while we were taking a look at that replay. And you just saw right there, it was about to get chaotic again as Adam Brockway looks like he fell back from his pack and is not going to necessarily have the help right away. Actually, no, he's way out ahead of the pack with Jose Medina, Dan Willis, and Craig Bray as Bray lost a ton of ground there. Luke Christian takes over the race lead once again ahead of Chris Hudson, Trent Dinkle, Park Hilliard, and Pat Harvey, the top five. So you can go 39 laps on a full tank of fuel here. 
It's not really that big of a deal in terms of, you know, fuel saving or fuel strategies. We know that this is a three-stop race. We knew that coming in. No one's got that Jesse Love 55 lap uh, fuel tank, which... That's his magic. I, I, I don't want to talk about that Xfinity yeah. Series race. That's the only mention I'm going to make. <laughs> that was just unfortunate, man. That was nah. so unfortunate, but that, that's Talladega. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Talladega yeah. does what Talladega does. Uh, on the team plane yesterday, coming back from the track, uh, we, we had a shared sentiment amongst uh, a few of my coworkers and uh, one of our drivers of our feelings on Talladega and the racing that happens there. But anyway, the racing happening here is Trent Dinkle just went to the outside line. It's the line that his teammate after Acosta is in. Two cars sandwiched in between him and Acosta. But it's five drivers aligned in this front group. Everybody else is far back. Yeah, that's exactly it. This top 10 or so has broken away from the rest of the field as we're watching the likes of Trent Dinkle and Luke Christian side by side for the race lead. Way back behind them is Adam Brockway that leads that second group. And they're about seven seconds or so behind the leaders right now. So a long way to go for them. A little bit of a different pit strategy, but like we said, there's still going to be another one uh, to come here. And of course, we have not seen any sort of caution 42 laps in, which is fantastic. But uh, sometimes that thought is a little bit too good to be true as the top 10 single files out. We'll see if they're able to pull away just a little bit here from the Brockway led group number two, which isn't really established as a large group as yet, just two cars and then a trailer of Jose Medina right now. So no momentum really to be gained by that second quote unquote group. John Jones, a speeding penalty at hit entry has to come down and serve a black flag and has already done so. Two drivers, one lap down. It's uh, John Jones as well as Chad Kibbe. Stan Carnathan three laps down. So. As it stands, if a caution came out, John Jones would receive a uh, uh, lucky dog to get back onto the lead lap, but Kidney is just a couple seconds behind him. Nick Gowin, uh, as well as Jake Mackey, though, they are close to getting lapped here by this front of the field. You see, or at least hear them in the foreground, everybody else in this lead pack coming in the background here. And that could be interesting, just two by two right here. Um, but they're starting to string out. That inside line got moving in a hurry. The inside lane definitely did get moving there. Tommy Brandon leading the charge ahead of Jeff Chandler, Eric Hogg, Trent Dinkle, Maverick Davis. That's the top five. And now as Dinkle and Davis gonna go up to the high side and see if they can change it up just a little bit. But I believe Maverick Davis gonna get swallowed up in the middle lane. Dinkle goes up ahead of Abner Acosta and Luke Christian. They're gonna get a big charge up on the high side. We'll go side by side for the race lead. It's Dinkle up top, Brandon on the inside with Acosta and Chandler as the pushers here. We'll see who gets hooked up better as the top three on the high side are in a three car tandem right now. That should give them a big surge down the back straight away. Open the opportunity if they do want to drop down to the inside. The top four up top have cleared Tommy Brandon down on the bottom. It looks like they're going to stay up top where they've been comfortable so far and see if they can continue the charge forward. As a brief note, the uh, Adam Brockway, Dan Willis, Jose Medina train was over six seconds back of the lead. Now they're only 5.6 seconds back and they're five total seconds off of this group once they get to within maybe four, maybe 3.8 seconds of the tail end of this group. They'll uh, be a part of it. That's a big difference to make up, but they, they have been going admirably. What happened here? A big shuffle. And was that Maverick Davis that got put way out of line? It was. What happened? Yeah, not sure what just happened right there. I'll see if I can get a quick look at that. Yeah, Davis actually just gets up into the outside wall by himself. Actually, no, he had a little bit of help 
from Park Hilliard. Went to the outside of Hilliard. Hilliard slides up just a little bit. They both run out of room. Maverick Davis up into the outside wall. Tommy Brandon and Pat Harvey have a little bit of contact on the inside as well. But Maverick Davis, the big loser in that one. That's going to give that second group with Brockway, Willis, and Medina an extra car potentially to work with here. They should catch Maverick Davis rather quickly, of course, because multiple cars will have more speed than just the singular Maverick Davis here. But it has segmented more with this top eight just being single file. Uh, you have to imagine if it goes green the rest of the way is this uh, three car uh, under this three car group they're catching up to lap traffic is going to be a massive deterrent to some of their speed. Uh, you have to wonder if when the next cycle of pit stops does occur, how much of a segmentation um, will occur between the top eight runners in this one. It's definitely going to break off a little bit here. And, and one thing that's also going to come into play, of course, as of right now, the race has trended towards a green to checkered style Talladega event. So you're going to see the pit strategy come into play. Are you going to come down early? Are you going to try to run it out here? We'll have to see what happens. Chad Kibbe comes down pit road with a little bit of help. So we'll see if he's able to gather that car back up. But uh, we are catching up to the Nicholas Goen led group. Actually, it's going to be four of them now as they're going to go by Marshall Harris. Jake Mackey's in there as well. So what is the lead pack is going to get a little bit bigger here as that group of lap cars about to get swallowed up. Yeah, they're going to have to uh, just stay put, but they should grab on to the tail end here. We get a look at a replay of what happened to Maverick Davis in the foreground. I, I'm not sure what Maverick was doing right there, to be quite honest, because there was no room to go to the outside of Park Hilliard. Um, just impatience costing Maverick there. And I mean, this isn't the first time that we've mentioned that tonight, where some of these moves were, were highly questionable that we've seen from some drivers. The 15 has shown big uh, aggression all season long so far and it, it shot him in the foot a couple of times and it just did again there i don't think is heavy damage on that machine but he's gonna suffer quite a bit here if we do end up going green because he's lost the lead back and continues to fall back now uh, that gap is double digits between himself and this lead pack it's gonna go a little bit choppier because you're gonna have some uh, lucky dog battles happening in this main group along with the uh, lead of the race being its own battle, which by the way, I mean, Trent Dinkel is leading this race, which I mean, there's, if there's one track that he's got the lowest chance of winning, it's right here, right now. But as the leader, he's getting more bonus points. We're not quite sure about the bonus for the most laps led in this race, but he's got to be getting close to it, um, if not already having it at this current moment. Nonetheless, a lot of interesting battles and key um, battles happening in this lead group. So we're 50 laps complete here, uh, another 45 to go as we start lap 51. Pit cycles will probably start in around 14, 15 laps time, at least for uh, some of the leaders here. Uh, it's, it's been a great Talladega race, even if we're starting to hit a tiny bit of a lull. No, you're definitely right on that. It has been a great race so far. And in regards to the most laps led, it, it's either Trent Dinkle or that car directly behind him and Lou Christian. Both of those guys have been up front most of the night here tonight. I think Christian might have a little bit of an edge right now, but if Dinkle continues to lead the way, that's easily going to transition into his favor and reach a point uh, within probably the next dozen or so laps where nobody else except for these two has the opportunity to grab that bonus point. But right now, this entire lead pack is absolutely single file including that lap traffic that we swallowed up not too long ago, including Nick Goen and Stan Carnathan that are on the tail end of this one. Jake Mackey in there as well. And that second group that we mentioned earlier just really has not been able to gain anything as of yet. It's Brockaway, 
uh, Willis and Pat Harvey that are together there. Eric Hag is the trailer not too far behind them, but if this lead pack remains single file, it's just going to be among them when it comes down to the end of it. It is slightly calm right now uh, with the top seven now in the lead pack. Of course, uh, you still have Nick Gowen, Jake Mackey uh, in this pack as well. Um, that will be an interesting inter battle that happens here. I, I never feel comfortable trying to get back into the lead of this race if I was uh, one of those drivers uh, fighting for the lucky dog here, but why not take it in your own hands, right? If, if you try and get the uh, lead of this pack, it's not the lead of this race, but you don't have to worry about being the lucky dog in your back on the lead lap. So it's a strategy to play as Dinkle gets a bit bent out of shape. Luke Christian could have pushed the issue right there, but decided against it. He's pushing Trent big time across the start finish line and Hudson is getting a big toe. Park Hilliard has fallen way back here and should build a fairly big run, but he's not even being pushed either. He's just trailing, and I wonder if he's going to use this to his advantage and attempt to start a second line once he does close in. It's definitely a possibility, and some of these guys, I would imagine, are trying to save a little bit of gas here, so when they do have to come down for that final pit stop, they can take a lot less fuel than some of these other competitors. But as of right now, it does look like everyone, for the most part, is comfortable just remaining single file. You see Chris Hudson on the rear end of the uh, Lou Christian machine. Was looking like maybe he wanted to go the inside, but I, I think he's just trying to get a little bit of air on the nose of that machine so he can avoid any sort of temperature issues from this pack being close together up at the front. But for the most part, it, it, it's been a very quiet race so far here at Talladega. I'm watching the second group still. They remain single filed out. Rockway leads that one ahead of Dan Willis. Pat Harvey and Eric Hag has caught them now. It's quite a gap back to Mark Kalen, who has a group of his own with Greg Carr, Jose Medina, and the Marshall Harris machine was with them. He has lost that pack. And then another larger pack is quite a bit off with Craig Bray, David Stevenson, Tim Perry, uh, Ryan Scalney, Waldo Walden. Maverick Davis is in that one back in 20th now. And uh, that is the rest of those lead lap cars. So we've broken up into four packs right now, Dylan. Two small ones separating the two larger groups that are bookending the field right now. And almost two thirds of the way through this race still have a little bit more time before we get there I, I feel like it's we saw the craziness from the start we saw drivers just testing out some moves and seeing the runs that they can get the issue is yeah you can get a big run and you can side draft uh, but if it's single file and no one wants to go with you you're not moving anywhere no, absolutely not, especially when the field is as broken up as it is right now, split into those multiple packs. If you're a driver such as Park Hilliard, you look to the outside or the inside of this top three grouping of Dinkle, Christian, and Hudson, it's very easy for you to just get freight trained by the rest of this pack, fall all the way back, and all of a sudden you're, you're just kind of a fish out of water hoping that you can hang on with one of those other groups, but you're absolutely going to take yourself out of contention should this race remain green. It's uh, it's it's a lull. It's the Talladega Super Speedway lull that we sometimes get after pit cycles when there's some sloppiness that happens in those pit cycles. And uh, this is just playing perfectly for Trent. Absolutely, and again, we entered this race thinking, okay, maybe this is an event that Dinkle is not going to be the guy that everyone else has to try to beat in it. But as of right now, it's it's Trent Dinkle and Luke Christian that have really controlled the race from the drop of the green flag. Of course, you've sprinkled a couple other leaders in there, such as Adam Brockway, that led a couple of laps during the pit cycle. But for the most part, it's been either the 9 or the 21 out front. And that is how it continues to be right now. Of course, 
if you're one of those groups further back, you're pushing really hard right now, trying to catch the leaders, but of course you're trying to catch those other packs as well. Advance your way up, get those points that are so very valuable in such a short championship that one move could cause that caution that we haven't had yet just based off of a, a push gone wrong. I mean, there's no point to, if you're within this lead group right now, there is legitimately no point to push the issue, right? This group, and, no. Yeah, right. There's there's no point. Um, They're just on for a Sunday drive right now. The only thing you stand to gain is the bonus point for leading the lap. And I feel like at this point, if you haven't led a lap or minimal, then the, uh, the most laps led is definitely outside of your reach. So um, I... I it, it, it's a podcast at this moment um, for them in the car, too. They, they probably have uh, their favorite music and favorite podcast playing as they're just kind of riding in line. They're not even close to each other pushing. The closest we've seen them push right lately is Luke Christian and Trent Pickle. Uh, but that's really it. And that's the way these kind of races go. When, when you do string together quite a few green flag laps, it, it turns into, like you said, a podcast. For us up here, you're just kind of trying to find something, a storyline to follow along through the event, such as Stan Carnathan just went down pit road once again uh, a couple laps ago. So his troubles do continue here tonight. Unfortunate for him, this could have been a really uh, big opportunity for him to get up there and compete for a victory. And he was looking really good early on until just a, an absolute glitch took him out of it. So very unfortunate there. Uh, I guess we could say a part failure for the 82 of Stan Carnathan, but for the drivers as well, like you said, you, you got your music playing in the background. You're you're chatting with the guys in Discord, just talking about you know how your season's going, or are talking about the race today with some of the chaos that we saw there in the real world at Talladega. Christian is really pushing Trent. In this, uh, in this race, you get a look at all the positions gained and everybody in the top 14 have gained positions based off of where they started in this race. Uh, the only driver from the top 16 or 17 that has lost positions is Waldo Walden, but hey, all it takes is one driver uh, falling way back from the front for drivers to be in the green, moving up positions, but we're just a few laps away from uh, pit stops happening in this race. The stint length right now, 27 laps for the leaders in this race, in this group that we're seeing. Uh, they came down pit road on lap 35 last time. If they go 35 laps again, that gets them to lap 70 uh, before we see them peel down into pit road. Another lap car that they're about to fly on by past and uh, that's just easy pickings on the inside right there. Yeah, that's the 32 Marshall of Marshall Harris, Harris going to go an additional lap down there. Just no real help for him on the racetrack. We'll see if he's able to maybe tack on to the tail end of this group, which, uh, as you can see, of course, Abner Acosta is the tail end of the initial group. As you see, the position gain on the tower, uh, like you said, Jeff Chandler, one of those big movers today, Dan Willis also, both of those drivers up 15 positions and pretty much everyone else has sprinkled in a couple of positions gained throughout with the exception of really very few drivers. So it's kind of, it's interesting to see the drivers that have gained a lot and some of those guys that have just really stuck around where they started, maybe trying to play it safe right from the start and that backfired on them in the late going of this one. But we're only about two thirds of the way through. So still a good chunk of the race to go. You never know what could happen here. Yeah, I mean, one spin that ends up with the car stopped on the racetrack. And then we've got a yellow flag that bunches uh, everybody in the top 20 back together again. And uh, that could be quite interesting for how this race shakes out. Trent Dinkle, I'm sure at this point, if he hasn't already clinched it. He is uh, close to clinching most laps led. Um, and you see in the background, uh, just barely, the secondary four-car group of Dan Willis, Pat Harvey, Eric Hogg, 
and Adam Brockway, who have done an admirable job of getting themselves into a position on the intervals to potentially make some headway back into this race. They have some help from lap traffic uh, in behind them, but they are only three seconds from the lead. That means they're only around 2.3 seconds from the tail of this lead pack, meaning that they're probably gonna get involved very soon for this race for the win. And that could change quite a bit here. Yeah, you could see them getting bigger and bigger on the tail end of this particular shot that we just had right there with Rockaway leading. A unfortunate issue here for Marshall Harris, gonna get hit with a black flag on pit road entry. Uh, he went about 10 miles per hour too quick coming down, so that will be a black flag for him. As Trent Dinkel does continue to lead the way ahead of Lou Christian. One thing you mentioned, Dylan, not too long ago is in order to get that caution, we need a car to stop on the racetrack after a wreck. But here at Talladega, there's more area off the racetrack than there is actually on it. Everything below the line will not bring out a yellow flag unless thrown manually by an administrative figure. So it's very easy for something to get swept under the rug here at Talladega. It's easy for it to get swept under the rug, under the yellow line, the racing line, which it's highly discouraged not to make moves underneath the yellow line. However, uh, as opposed to how it happens in real world NASCAR competition, uh, iRacing does not have any automatic uh, enforcement of that rule, meaning if you really want to get choppy with it, you could, but we'll have to get final word from the race control over whether that would be they penalized are. or not. That second group is there. Six cars have been added to the main pack. We've got more of a race happening right near the pit cycle. And just as expected, Abner Acosta going to jump down ahead of Dan Willis. And now that single file pack. Oh, contact between uh, Acosta and Willis there. Or sorry, Hilliard as Acosta going to get shuffled down there as Park Hilliard was in the middle lane, came down in front of Abner Acosta. But what was a single file pack that was looking relatively quiet, now having a very large shuffle right here as everyone from group number two now on the scene and ready to party with these leaders. Yeah, we are ready to party, but it might mean nothing if they don't have a good pit cycle as we saw from the last time they came Correct. into the pits. That's really what's going to matter. They're going to try and go as long as they can because they know the, uh, the less amount of fuel that they need to use to fill up their cars, the better it will be in terms of uh, time spent on pit road because that will be a big, big factor. Uh, make sure you don't take more than you need to get to the end of this race. And uh, remember, there are no overtime finishes, no green-white checkers in PRL competition. So you either get 90 minutes of racing action or 95 laps. That's exactly it. So one thing to watch here now, Dylan, of course, we're approaching lap number 60, which does mean we're getting, or lap number 70. We're, we're past 60 now, folks. We're on lap number 69, so uh, getting closer to 70 and 26 to go this upcoming time by. So going to be very interesting to see when these drivers opt to come down pit road. That lead pack has become single file once again, which could indicate that some of these drivers are thinking about coming down and ending their pit strategy for the evening or they're just trying to play it clean like they had done before and just tick off the laps there, pull away from any other potential groups that could join them here. But uh, just we're on, uh, we're on pit watch now with just over 25 to go. As a quick update, the uh, no passing under the yellow line is going to be enforced, uh, specifically post-race penalties and uh, We'll have to see exactly what that could mean if it happens in this race. Not saying it has or it will, but it is something to keep in mind because, uh, again, iRacing does not automatically enforce that, leaving it up to the hands of race control. And that's always something to keep in mind uh, at super speedway races where you can pass on the apron, 
uh, and any other normal racetrack, although unless it's a, tr uh, a trioval of like, you know, Michigan or Las Vegas, Atlanta. Well, Atlanta's now a super speedway, so you can't really do that there. Um, or another kind of track. You can, you can't do it at a super speedway. So lap 70 is about to be completed. I imagine that right around now, we might see drivers come into the pits or they might take it to around lap 73, 74 to run out this tank of fuel. Yeah, we're definitely within the last couple of laps of this particular run of fuel here. And we're getting an update from some of the drivers in the field, hearing about lap number 74 that they're going to come down. Not going to say who said that because don't want to give their strategy away. But uh, around lap 74, I would think as well, uh, Dylan, that we're going to see more of these drivers coming down pit lane and doing their final stop. You don't want to wait too late because of course you want to give yourself an opportunity to still have the time to get back up there if you lose a little bit of the draft or, or what have you on that particular pit cycle. But one thing you mentioned was passing below the line here at Talladega, not really a lot of opportunities that you'd want to do that compared to Daytona where the front straightaway here is just way too bumpy. And uh, obviously rules would be enforced to give those penalties out as we're hearing Luke Christian's going to come down this time so this could trigger a handful of cars from this lead pack making their final scheduled pit stop of the day here would it make sense for multiple cars to come down with Luke Christian if you're not running on the inside I can imagine you are not going to be coming into the pits right now I'd imagine pretty much this entire pack uh, will do exactly that and most of them absolutely come into the pits. Dinkle flies in there. Luke Christian locks up and goes into the grass. That's got to be a penalty and that would be a race ender if in fact it is a penalty. Actually, th that was that was bad there from Luke. Looking at it here, I I'm seeing Luke Christian did not get a penalty so I think he was able to get back on the pit surface just in time before a, a time trigger trigger a black flag for him going off in the uh, in the grass there but very very sketchy moment for Luke Christian and that nine car of Trent Dinkle as well I thought he was absolutely going to get wiped out there on entry thought the same exact thing I'm surprised that wasn't a penalty it had to be at the very limit of whether it would be or not as Willis and Brockway the two teammates on team Moradness come into the pits right now they get it slowed down just in time with a puff of smoke locking it up, but it is all good. Uh, Dinkle took left side tires, and I mean, in a green flag Talladega race, you, you want to spend as much time on the same set of tires as possible. You never want to take right sides. I know it's weird. You don't want to take pretty much any tires, right side tires especially, or four tires uh, that will take more time up when you're going down pit road. Um, because you're going to automatically lose the draft and be out of contention if it goes green the rest of the way. Yeah, Pat Harvey taking left side tires, Abner Acosta taking right side tires on pit lane. So a couple different strategies coming into play. New leader now on the racetrack is Adam Brockway as he just exited pit road. Park Hilliard and company going to come up on him quickly. It's going to be Hilliard, Hag, and Pat Harvey uh, those drivers last pit on lap number 72. So the race lead actually going to be handed over to Park Hilliard, and he has completed his pit cycle. He has completed it, and Park Hilliard uh, is going to have to come down into pit road. No. Wait a second, is this exactly, yeah, it's exactly what you were saying. I'm so sorry for getting it confused right there, but Hilliard, Hogg, and Harvey, <laughs> they've done such an admirable job, and everybody else really has not, that I'm kind of confused on how bad most of the field did there. To be fair, I, I don't know how this has happened. <laughs> Honestly, I, I think they just came down separately from the rest of the field. They were their own little pack. So I think they were able to get a much cleaner entry to pit lane and not really have to worry about the rest of those guys and it played into their cards of course we saw the Trent Dinkle pack both Dinkle and Luke Christian had issues on entry where Christian ended up out in the grass and Trent Dinkle himself had a major lockup here but we're hearing a penalty has been issued to the 709 of Craig Bray 
speeding on entry and that was a pretty massive one going almost 80 miles per hour in a 55 that would be a big ticket on the road oh that would be uh, more than a ticket that would be probably a suspension of your license especially if it happened out of state in virginia <laughs> yeah that's definitely not something you want to get there but uh just taking a look and now the second group is led by chris hudson he has Abner Acosta and Trent Dinkle with him. They're about three seconds off of Harvey, Hag, and Hilliard. Oh, no. And Craig Bray gets another black flag. Unsafe exit of Pit Road merges just very briefly too soon before the blue cone. So he's going to hit with another penalty. Oh, man. It's just compounding interest of penalties for him. And... Not the first driver that has had that happen to him in this race or uh, over the course of a season. When you serve a penalty, got to make sure you don't take another one. You're not free from penalties the next time you go down. So unfortunate happenings for him. We're watching that second group of three cars try and get to work to catch up to Hilliard, Hag, and Harvey. They're three seconds off the pace. And, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it the, if it goes green all the way i they're gonna have to work hard to catch up to these three and they're gonna start fighting for control of this race but i mean this is this is right now the three drivers that have the best shot of winning it all halyard hag and harvey if it goes green the rest of the way which honestly at this point it really should and just i just took a quick run through the field dylan and this is actually this one and the second group are the biggest packs on the racetrack right now. Three cars is the largest grouping that we have here at Talladega. Everyone else, two cars or even singular entries out there on the surface right now. So pretty wild. Almost a loss of control. We're hearing for a driver in the back of this pack. It was Maverick Davis who has gotten pushed by Mark Kalen. Kalen might not have squared up to the rear bumper as well as he possibly could have. Talking about needing this race to go green for these three to have a the best shot of winning it, and it almost went yellow. Yeah, and one thing I actually noticed, Dylan, on my timing and scoring screen a couple of moments ago, around the same time that Maverick Davis had his issues was he was disappearing from timing and scoring, so I wonder if a potential connection issue was coming into play for him and then all of a sudden, his car kind of reappears, goes from uh, easily able to drive through to a solid once again, and uh, and that sometimes leads to a little bit of a spike, as you see here. Maverick Davis ahead of Mark Kalen. That could have been a sketchy moment. Man, oh man, yeah! Wow, yeah. What, a what a save! save. Oh my goodness, what a save from Maverick Davis right there. Could have been awful. The secondary group, by the way, fell another second in the last lap. So great job by Hilliard, Hag, and Harvey to just keep moving forward. And I mean, it's only the three of them. So it, it's not really like they need to get out of line until maybe the last lap or two of this race to uh, make moves. They're, they should just ride out the rest of this one. Um, I, I, I mean, am I wrong there? Just ride the next 15 laps. I mean... Being first with 20 to go is does absolutely nothing for you. So stay in line, work together, separate yourself from that second group, which they continue to do, and then battle it. Go go three wide, come to the line for the heck of it, and see which one of you gets that top spot. But you're absolutely right, Dylan. There's no point of battling it out amongst these three right now. And I'm just incredibly impressed that they've been able to be the group to take the lead. They were the third pack when we were split amongst three and they were quite a bit back from the rest of the field so really impressive that they've been able to turn pit strategy into leading the way here as you take a look at the track conditions currently 97 degrees fahrenheit is the temperature so on the warmer side but not it as hot matter. as i've seen it here at talladega and as of right now these guys doing a great job out front it doesn't matter it, it really doesn't i mean the only time i can see if it was really scorching hot, maybe some quick moves in the tri-oval would be a little bit more sketchy than they already are. But 
Ah, temperature. Doesn't matter too, too much here at Dega. Just like the shade doesn't really matter either during a qualifying run here at Talladega. It really only affects grip levels of these cars. And uh, when you're running the same tires the entire time as most of these drivers are, it's, yeah, sure, maybe it can matter in a brief, quick snap of the wheel kind of moment, but I don't, I don't really see that being a big deal. Anyway, um, my soliloquy on tires and temperature at Talladega uh, notwithstanding, Acosta, Dinkle, and Hudson have fallen another second back off the lead three. Yeah, so this is working out really well for Park Hilliard, Eric Hag, and Pat Harvey as they remain single file as the top three group they have pulled away. I think one thing that's kind of hurting that second group is Chris Hudson it hasn't been necessarily as tight up to the rear end of Trent Dinkle as they might have liked. He was trailing back just a little bit. Now you see him up along the rear end of that number nine car, and that's what they need to do. They actually need at certain points to get into a three car tandem and work with each other to push their way forward. So we'll see what they're able to do. We'll see if they're able to gain any time on that top three. But as of right now, it's all Park Hilliard, Eric Hag, and Pat Harvey as we are quickly approaching just 10 laps to go here at Talladega. It has been a great race so far. Been a fantastic, clean Talladega race. It started out uh, kind of like a barn burner, I'd say. Uh, there were a lot of moves in three wide, uh, even four wide moments in this race. The pit cycles have definitely strung things out, but we still have 18 out of 26 total drivers entered in this race on the lead lap. And the chance for a new winner here, Park Hilliard, Eric Hag, and Pat Harvey, uh, the top three. Trent Dinkle has won all three races in the start of season two, 2K24 two in PRL Cup Series competition. But it's looking like they're not going to have a shot, but they did catch up seven tenths on the last lap or two to these three up front. And it's a very experienced second group here, so they kind of know what they need to do. We'll see if they're able to get up there and battle it out at the closing stage of this one. We're going to be 10 to go next time by. It continues to be Park Hilliard, Eric Hag, and Pat Harvey in group number one, about four seconds back. Now, just about to dip below that four seconds is Abner Acosta, Trent Dinkle, and Chris Hudson. Then there's a third grouping behind them with Dan Willis, Adam Brockway, and Luke, actually, Willis, Brockway, and Nicholas Goen together. And then it's Christian with uh, another one of the lap cars. And then a massive group towards the back, currently led by Tommy Brandon. Maverick Davis is in there. They even got cars on the apron right now. So hopefully they're able to sort themselves out as it looks like once again, Dylan, Mark Kalen's going to get shuffled out. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate for Mark. He's having a heck of a day up and down the field. If there will be a caution, it'll come out of this group. Uh, one one hundred percent. Tommy Brandon all the way back to Mark Kalen here, as well as some lap traffic involved in it with under 10 laps to go in this race, there are still some storylines that have yet to see its completion in this one. Yeah, the storylines definitely still alive and writing themselves at this point. We'll see what happens. That top three absolutely pushing on each other right now. Pat Harvey was all over the rear end of Eric Hag. Now he's just gonna fall back a little bit here as we ride on board with Brent Dinkle. He is all over the rear end of Abner Acosta. And it does look like they've gotten that gap between themselves and Pat Harvey at least below three seconds. And you can see that lead group on the top of the shot right now working their way out of turn number two. So potentially a group gonna come together here and battle it out amongst the top six in the closing few laps of this one. Coming to just eight laps to go here at Talladega. It's Park Hilliard out front. Bye. Do you see how much that gap has dropped between Harvey and Acosta? Uh, I mean, hold on. <laughs> this race might not be over because Park Hilliard, Eric Hogg, and Pat Harvey are starting to fight a little bit. 
and there's still enough time for Acosta, Dinkle, and Hudson to catch back up. They are working together perfectly. They are right up against each other, pushing through each of these corners, and the separation is starting to grow between Hilliard, Hag, and Harvey. I feel like experience and teamwork is starting to be a major factor in this one as Abner Acosta is now only two and a half seconds back of the race lead. You see them back there. They are hooked up and they are flying right now. They are absolutely hooked up and flying in group number two. Dinkle all over the rear end of Abner Acosta but that top group as well. Eric Hag knows what he needs to do. Has to get all over the rear end of Park Hillier, try to pull away a little bit, and they are slightly extending the gap between themselves and that second group. And speaking of the second group, Abner Acosta about to pick up another lap car. I believe that to be the, I thought that was the ninth win. And uh, we are absolutely getting down to the closing stages, to the nitty gritty of this one here at the Talladega Super Speedway. Six to go with the line this time. Just six to go, and I mean, just as quickly as we talk about that gap coming down to two and a half seconds, uh, it, it went up one second uh, over the course of the last 40 seconds of racing action. So it's crazy how quick things can change on a dime here uh, at Talladega. Lap 91 of 95 coming up, five remaining. And we're at the point that if a caution came out right now, we might, might go to one lap remaining once we got going here. And I apologize, we're at lap 90 and 95, six to go here. So, I mean, Acosta and Dinkle, they're gonna have to really start to work with Hudson big time to catch back up to Hilliard, Hogg, and Harvey. Um, uh, time is dwindling. Time is absolutely dwindling as you see at the top of the ticker. Just five laps to go here at the Talladega Super Speedway. It's all Park Hilliard, Eric Hogg, and Pat Harvey right now. They have about three and a half seconds over the second group of Abner Acosta, Trent Dinkle, and Chris Hudson. Uh, of course, there is still other groups on the racetrack could potentially cause some chaos towards the back of this one, but as of right now, this top group has done a phenomenal job of playing pit strategy into their cards and putting themselves out front. We'll see if it pays off here as they're coming to four to go this time. It's gonna be Park Hillier continuing to lead the way. And another thing that's gonna come into play, Dylan, is when do the likes of Hag and Harvey look to make a move? I would think probably off of turn number four on the last lap, but you never know, especially when there's some inexperience involved. Well, Park Hilliard has the uh, least, I'd say, in the standings. Well, maybe the most to gain in the standings. He's currently ninth after coming into this race uh, in ninth behind Jeff Chandler. But Eric Hag and Pat Harvey are both the third and fourth in the point standings. Abner and Trent being right behind, even though they're three plus seconds behind. It really is not going to help them in terms of catching up in the points battle. But between the three drivers currently with the best shot of winning this race, a combined two PRL victories across all competitions, all series. Those two wins are only held by Pat Hart. Hilliard and Hag have never won a race in the PRL. This could be a massive moment, a massive day for both of them as we enter the tri-oval, coming to two laps to go in this race. It's all the top three here, and you're gonna to start to see some moves being made now. If caution came out now, that's race over, and the winner would be who's ever in first. It'll absolutely be interesting to see who's able to get there first at the end. That gap staying about three and a half seconds between group number one and group number two as we're gonna hit two to go this time by, like you said, Pat Harvey, the only driver in this top three with a victory in the PRL Cup Series, and we saw it on his in-room shot there. He already had the safety goggles on his head, so he's ready for some champagne to get sprayed. It, did he know something that we didn't hear tonight? Maybe he just felt no, that he he's always tonight. got them on. He's always got the goggles on in this. He's uh, to win. That, that's it. He's and always prepared to win. 
white flag in the air. The next flag will end the race. It'll be the checkered lap 95 this time by. Actually still showing 94 in this one. I might be preemptively saying it, but didn't it just say 94 as we were around in turn four? We're coming to the white flag now. There we yeah. go. White flag <laughs> in the air again. Am I crazy? <laughs> Maybe a little I'm bit. crazy. Oh, man. Now it's the white flag. Hold on here. <laughs> white flag one to go. Oh, there's Hilliard going to get caught behind the pack. Here comes Eric Hag up to the high side. We're coming oh, down man. to this tri-oval. Final lap. Who's going to win this race? Hag trying to make a move, but Hilliard will cross the line. We haven't seen the checker yet, but it did say it was the final lap. Are they still racing? I racing systematically confused right now. They're they still are racing. Indeed still racing, yes, sir. Oh my goodness! So we still continue on here. This is the final lap of the race. Park Hilliard, Pat Harvey, Eric Hag, but the checkered is out as we speak. It's been thrown for other drivers. Who has won this race? Currently, it's showing that Hilliard is in first, but Harvey, Hogg, and Hilliard. Currently, this group of cars, this is madness right now. We're trying to figure it out as we speak, but Hilliard is shown as the winner of this race. We believe it is the case. Yeah, Park Hilliard has taken the victory, I do believe, anyways. What and happened Harvey there? And Eric Hogg as now the rest of the field gonna finish up. Looks like it's gonna be at the line. I believe after Acosta gonna get fourth ahead of Chris Hudson, Trent Dinkle, Adam Brockway, Dan Willis, Luke Christian, and Waldo Walden. As uh, we just basically put the finish in a blender and uh, somebody won and somebody didn't. I, I swear to you, the checkered flag should have come out. Uh, as Park Hilliard won, he was in the lead. So congratulations to Park, his first ever PRL victory. He's gonna burn it down in the infield, or at least the tri-oval infield here, the ballpark at Talladega. I will go through the final results in just a few moments, but I feel like my confusion at the beginning with uh, being the last lap, I think it was the last lap overall, but Park Hilliard, the private team driver, wins it at Dago with Pat Harvey and Eric Hogg rounding out the podium. We'll talk to them in just a few moments. Abner Acosta, Chris Hudson, and Trent Dinkle round out that next group of drivers. Brockway, Willis, Christian Walden are your top 10 results. Back in P11, we continue with Jose Medina and Jeff Chandler, Mark Kalin, Ryan Skolny, Tim Perry, Tommy Brandon, and Maverick Davis from that third group. Greg Carr, finishes uh, the last car in the lead lap while Nick Gowen, Jake Mackey, both a lap down, but in the top 20, Chad Kibbe, the last car a lap down, John Jones, Craig Bray, two laps down, David Steveson, three, Marshall Harris, eight, and Stan Carnathan, 44 laps down in this one. That was a weird ending to this race, and Eric Hag is uh, currently standing by third place driver with Robert Hill. Yeah, Eric coming home in the third position here tonight. Congratulations on that. Why don't you walk us through your race and how in the world did your group get up there and take over the lead at the end of this one? I don't know what happened to that second pack there. Uh, Cause I've hit it with Abner and a handful of other guys. I, you guys probably had a better look than I did to uh, see how we split off, but somehow our little three car train was able to hold off that big pack back there with a lot of fast guys. Absolutely a lot of fast guys behind you, but you were able to get it done here tonight. You're grouping and ending up on the podium. Obviously, was there a moment coming to the finish that you wish you would have done a little bit differently to move yourself up two spots on the podium? I don't know if there's much I could have done. Uh, I mean... Pat and uh, Park both were really fast with their buddies. So when I pulled out of line, I was just hoping he'd go with me. And when he didn't, I knew I got third. Uh, those lap cars being there kind of made the ending a little bit more interesting. Maybe killed some strategy. 
yeah, it definitely looked like it, it threw a wrench into it there just a little bit. But uh, Eric, looking ahead to the rest of the season, is there a race that you may have circled on your calendar as one that you can get up there and snag that victory? I really thought it was going to be this one. Uh, Texas, I didn't think I was going to do well. And due to connection issues and dropping back, I thought that could have been a good one. But, I mean, to survive this far into the season without a bad race so far, I'm going to take it. Well, momentum definitely on your side now, Eric. Before we let you go, any sponsors you want to thank or shout-outs you want to give for putting that 89 machine on the podium tonight? Uh, I want to shout-out my fiance Natalie, and my Aunt Lisa, who are always a huge supporter of my uh, fun sim racing hobby. And also, thank you guys. You guys always do an awesome job week in and week out. Well, we definitely appreciate that. Congratulations on the podium, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. That was Eric Hag, our third place finisher here tonight at Talladega. And Pat Harvey, of course, we'll drag him in here, finishing second in this one. Bit confusing on the finish. You lost by officially just under seven hundredths, but you were there in that final pack the entire time. Take us through everything that happened after that second pit stop for you. Uh, I don't know. Was that the one at some point? somebody in front of me hit the wall and we lost some time we were like i think eight seconds back so we caught the lead pack again and then uh the last pit stop i think a few of the guys in front of us just had some mistakes uh and so yeah me and park and eric that was fun uh trent said it was a snoozer but we had a blast i don't know i don't know about everybody else but we were having fun <laughs> Hey, it's easy to have a blast when you're in the top three with a chance to win the race. And it looked like you guys were having fun. You got hooked up a few times and were trying to make it work uh, late in the race. But there was a bit of fear that maybe that Abner Acosta and Trent Dinkle led third or second group of three cars could catch up. And it got close there at the end. Yeah, I don't know what, what slowed them down. They were like within two seconds at one point, And then it kind of got bigger the gap got bigger um i don't know eric was pushing park good and yeah i thought they were going to catch us too but uh i think we got lucky the, the lap cars right at the end did scare me a little bit um but it, it worked out that was nice well when it works out it works out in a big way not first for you but second place is certainly a beneficial spot to be in congratulations and anyone you'd like to shout out uh shout out my wife and duncan and my dog and mammy who my grandma she watches every race so shout out mammy and you guys thanks for doing this and prl well we appreciate it very much congrats again on the second place finish pat thanks a lot thanks for having me Always a joy to talk to the man with the goggles ready for the champagne. Unfortunately, no champagne for him, but Park Hilliard did get to throw some, and you're standing by with him. Yeah, joined here by Park Hilliard. Park, congratulations on the victory. How good does it feel to get that first victory here in the PRL Cup Series? It feels awesome. I love it. I'm just now, the high is just now going down. I think I blacked out for the last 25 laps. It definitely did seem like a moment that would have that huge uh, rush of adrenaline for you there at the end. We asked this to Eric Hogg earlier, but what was it with your strategy that got you guys up there? We didn't even really take you into account there from your group uh, to be able to get up there and take the lead when we went through that pit cycle. I have, I wish, I, I had no idea. I wish I knew. I just followed everyone else and took two. With. Yeah, it, it definitely worked out taking the two tires park but uh, you know looking ahead through the season here so far uh, actually looking back first it, it's been a pretty decent season for you. you've got yourself up there within the top 10 in points had yourself some solid runs so far obviously getting the victory tonight what does that do for your momentum as we head into the uh, halfway point of the season uh, it's probably downhill from here but I'll take it well, that's not the way to look at it. <laughs> no, I'm excited. I'm excited. Definitely a confidence booster. For sure.
definitely a confidence booster there but looking ahead to the rest of the schedule is there another race that you have on your uh, circled on your calendar that you think maybe you can get up there grab yourself a win or, or a podium finish once again i'll keep my fingers crossed but just go week by week i don't I honestly every time i race a track is generally the first or second time for the week that i've been practicing it so since joining this league is when i kind of got in the and in, in this car and on oval so a little bit of a learning curve every week and i gotta ask you how are you gonna celebrate that first victory here tonight i'm about to go eat a 9 15 dinner and uh, watch the preds win all right all right that's that's definitely a good way to spend your evening before we let you go here tonight park any sponsors you want to thank shout outs you want to give for putting that number two machine in victory lane here tonight at talladega yeah, I want to shout out Eric for pushing me around for 25 laps and, and keeping the gap from the group behind, or or it would this would probably uh, have been a different outcome. So, thanks, Eric. Well, congratulations on the victory here tonight, Park, and we'll see you next week. See if maybe you can double it up and uh, go two in a row. We'll see. I appreciate it. That was Park Hilliard, your winner here tonight, Dylan. I've got no dog in the fight, uh, or more appropriately, no predator in the fight uh, between the natural predators and Vancouver Canucks, but I, I feel like I'd rather see Vancouver win that NHL playoff series. Uh, not sure if like that's, that's more likely upon that. Eh, it probably is more likely. It, just as likely as it is that Joe more challenging than what we saw here tonight at Tal more challenging than what we saw here tonight at Talladega. This is a racetrack that absolutely uh, chews me up and spits me out every time I come here for any kind of race. So watch for some chaos uh, all night long and some great racing action up at the front. And watch for the likes of Trent Dinkle and Abner Acosta to go toe to toe once again. We'll see if maybe one of those drivers is able to keep Abner off uh, uh, Trent off the top step of the podium for a second week in a row. We'll see if that is the case. But Park Hilliard wins his first ever. PRL race at Talladega here in the PRL Cup Series. We'll be back at Dover in one week's time. But from myself, Mike Yao, Nick Hunter, and Robert Hill Jr., we wish you all a pleasant good evening from us at Race Spot TV. Good night and good racing.